Previously on Life. An urban war zone for me is a part of the city that has been neglected in terms of investments, basic public services, very elementary things. There are more and more cases of children uh, suffering and there is a constant threat also from other forces in society. Housing ought to be treated as something that people have as a right. The Gaza Strip, sandwiched between Israel and the Mediterranean Sea, is just 45 kilometers long and six wide. It's one of the most densely populated areas of the world. Over a million Palestinians live here. Most are refugees. Their parents or grandparents were forced to abandon their homes in 1948 when Israel moved in. Throughout the year 2000, the Camp David final peace talks between the Palestinians and Israelis limped along. In August, they finally broke down. Tensions rose, and in September, a provocative visit to the Al-Aqsa Mosque sparked the second Palestinian Intifada, or uprising. Gaza's always been hemmed in, surrounded by Israel. Under the iron grip of the Israeli Defense Force, it's become a virtual prison. No one is allowed in or out without their permission. Gaza is under siege. Europe victimized the Jews. They were in the Auschwitz. Of course, that's terrible. But in the same time, when they decided to flee, they came to this safe place called Palestine. But the fact they came to Palestine, they victimized another people. The Palestinians claim that there are four million Palestinian refugees. If Israel were to uh, uh, absorb only a part of it, this would obviously uh, bring the end of a political entity called Israel. And therefore, this amounts to a committing suicide. Erez checkpoint, the only route out of Gaza to Israel. A year ago, 25,000 Palestinians would file through this tunnel early every morning to work in Israeli industries. Their income, a lifeline for these refugees. But since the start of the Intifada, Israel's shut its gates to all these workers. Shati camp in the north of Gaza houses more than 74,000 refugees. It's one of nine refugee camps in the Gaza Strip. Riyad Taramzi was born here. He's one of the 25,000 workers who've lost their jobs in Israel because of the Israeli clampdown. Now, he can't support his family. Since September last year, we haven't been able to get to work. You could say everybody is in the same situation. People are struggling from these things, such as not being able to work or get a job. You understand me? Life without work has no taste. Riyad and his wife Saba live in this two-roomed house with their seven children. Before, the family could just about survive on Riyadh's weekly pay packet from Israel. Now, life is becoming daily more and more difficult. They're like thousands of refugee families in Gaza. First of all, we haven't paid the electricity bill because we haven't any money to pay it. We can't pay for water, health insurance. Also, we can't pay the telephone bill. We can't pay anything. I mean, the situation is disastrous. Not just for me, but for everyone. 
ولا يمكن من فوق ممكن من فوق الالف really I've borrowed over three thousand US dollars and that's not counting the bills this means that in two years time I can't repay this loan if this goes on no one will be able to repay one shekel this is Riyad's younger brother he works in the market he is supporting his and Riyad's family he gives Riyad's children pocket money and brings them from the market and buys them a sack of flour what more can I say? Riyad's son-in-law Ramadan used to work as a plasterer in Gaza, but now he's lost his job too because of Israel's stranglehold over the local economy. What have you been doing? I've been out looking for work from early morning. My legs ache, but I haven't found a job. What can I do? What can you do? You're just like everyone else. It isn't just you. Well, everybody else is going to explode if we have to sit at home like old women. Our economy is linked to Israel's behavior. If Israel prevents the 50,000 workers going to work in Israel, that means that 100,000 people working in Gaza will be unemployed. UNRWA is the United Nations Relief Agency for Palestinian Refugees. With its resources under pressure, it's now using emergency funds from appeal donations to help Gaza's unemployed Palestinians. It set up a temporary rotating job scheme employing 3,000 manual workers, but this is just a fraction of those without jobs. Every day, workers visit the office to see if their names have come up. Hello. We've applied two or three times and our names still haven't come up. Shall we apply again? Maybe they'll come up. Shall we put in a new application? You don't need to reapply. I haven't got any money to feed my kids. I swear the stress is shortening my life. This has never happened to me before. We receive uh, daily hundreds of applications. We have a database with more than 25,000 applications that we have already put in the database, plus we have maybe another 10,000 waiting to be uh, uh, inputted. What can we do? This is our situation. All the world is watching and turning a blind eye. Never mind. Let them stay in their seats. 40,000 people have applied here. There is no money. There is no work. We're learning up for something to eat and we can't get it. There's no money. And where can we get it? And the kids want to eat. We can suffer, but our little kids can't. Israel invaded and occupied the Gaza Strip in 1967. But over the last seven years, since the signing of the Oslo Agreement, the Palestinians have been allowed a degree of self-rule and economic independence under the Palestinian Authority although Israel always retained overall security control. This fragile alliance has now broken down, and Palestinian refugees are now suffering the consequences. For Saba's mother, Thorea, the trouble started when the Israelis came and took her land 53 years ago. What they are doing is frustrating us. It's making us tense. We are exhausted. We are worrying day and night. When will there be a good solution? And when will the roads be open for us? As long as there is a blockade like this, even the young people who don't think about joining the protests will be encouraged to go. This pressure results in bad things, and more pressure will cause an explosion. 
لانه كثر الضغط والد الانفجار حرام عليه تاخذوا بلان ان شوت اس وذ تانكس وي هاف نو تانكس نو غانز نو ويبنز جاست بيسز اوف ستونز واتس ا ستون Two sticking points in the peace negotiations were the refugees' right of return and the control of Jerusalem. These led to protests and clashes. Almost daily, children go to throw stones at the checkpoints. Many get shot. At Al Aouda Hospital, near the main border checkpoint, 15 boys have been admitted with gunshot wounds today. Our young man here is well known for us. <laughs> this is his second time to get injured uh, during this intifada. He's 13 years old. He said that we go to uh, checkpoint, to the Iris checkpoint, so that we can protect our land. Laila Halla. Yes. She said she's just uh, thanking God for uh, his injuries uh, because it's not serious. I mean, it's it's really you know dangerous to go up there, up there. But we have to go. We we cannot just let these young uh, young kids die. <laughs> uh, he went there to throw stones. Then they shot him. بقت دور أخوي. قالوا الناس على أخوك كيف إيرز. Uh, somebody told him that his younger brother was at the checkpoint throwing stones. His younger brother ran away from him, and as he was hiding, he received a bullet. I would say two bullets actually. She tries to tell them not to go. She tries to prevent them not to go, but they go. I'm afraid someone will convince my children to go to Al Muntar or Nazarim Junction or any point where the Israeli army is present and they get hit and killed. That terrifies me. Mahmoud Abu Shahada from Jabalia refugee camp was killed at a Rez checkpoint. He's one of 135 children killed by Israeli soldiers in the last nine months in Gaza and the West Bank. Over 400 others have been disabled. Half were under 17. <laughs> You work with him in the supermarket. He is, he is for uh, 15 years old. Killed him in his head. There are few Israeli commentators who publicly condemn the military's response to the Palestinian children's protests. But journalist Amira Haas does. It has become completely unquestionable that the army has a right to shoot children who throw stones and uh, those stones don't even tickle the army beton blocks which make this military post despite repeated requests the israeli defense force were unable to offer a spokesperson to provide an official response to these issues He's lucky not to understand too much, isn't he? Yes, it's better. He doesn't know what's going on. So he is not afraid. Isn't that right, Akram? You don't worry, do you? Good boy. He'll be old soon enough, won't he? Of course, from now on, as he grows up, he will see everything with his own eyes. Things are happening for real in front of kids, like the missiles and the bombings last night. Don't you think these kids are aware of how their life is going? Air raids on Palestinian cities are becoming more frequent. Last night, only two kilometers from Saba's house, Israeli missiles struck the Palestinian Authority's Force 17 base in Gaza City. 
The reason? The Israeli Defense Force blamed Force 17 for recent attacks on Israeli settlements. <coughs> This is just one part of the building. Can you see these two shells? One from this side and one from the other side. This time, most of the men escaped when they heard helicopters approaching. It's called guided missile Of course, they are made by the United States of America. That's why they will be of the opinion that the Israelis are the ones who always attack us, deprive us of our rights, and take away all the sweet things in our life. Nothing sweet is left. I won't imagine any sort of peace can be concluded except Israel as a state, as a people, as collective conscious, said, fine, we committed something wrong, we victimized Palestinians, we made them refugees, these people uh, were suffering for the last 53 years, and it's about time to find a solution. While we feel compassion for all these refugees, we think that there should be a solution which will uh, give satisfaction to the Palestinians, uh, Palestinian refugees, but at the same time will maintain the survival of the state of Israel. Personally, as an Israeli Jew, and I see myself as a child of, 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 of refugees, refugees from the Holocaust, I, I don't understand why I have more rights here than, than Palestinians. The refugees' right of return is set out in the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 194, passed in 1948. It states that refugees wishing to return to their homes and live at peace with their neighbours should be permitted to do so at the earliest practicable date. The refugees' right of return is reinforced by international treaties, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Fourth Geneva Convention, and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. They do have the right either to return compensated or to choose another place, but the right of return is fully guaranteed according to international law, according to UN General Assembly Resolution 194. When Israel applied to become a member of the United Nations, it uh, was accepted on the basis that it will respect Resolution 194, but it did not. To add to the family's other problems, Akram is sick. He needs surgery to correct a congenital gut disorder, a cost that the family will have to contribute to, with money they don't have. It's an all too common problem among refugee children here as Dr. Mustafa Khalil explains. There is a specific uh, health problem here. It is regarding to the situation as anemia, as uh, uh, growth and development problem, as many things. Uh, Gaza Strip and refugee camps due to uh, the economy of the family, especially the economy of the family, the income. And here now, there's a problem because there is uh, uh, no work for the big, the, the, the head of the family, big number of family. It is here a problem, you know. We must refer him to Shifa Hospital, to a pediatric surgery department and then he, they decide what they can do for the child. Shifa Hospital is in Rafa, at the southern end of Gaza. But the road that links the north and south is controlled by Israeli forces, making the trip difficult and sometimes dangerous. There are now 20 Israeli settlements dotted along the Gaza Strip and shown here in red. They're all heavily guarded by the Israeli Defense Force and occupy nearly half this small sliver of land. They have their own access roads to Israel, 
but these also cross the main arteries that link the Palestinian cities. The army closes the main roads whenever settler vehicles are passing. They also frequently close them for no apparent reason, cutting Gaza into three strips. What was taking place is actually a process of Bantustanization that um, Israel managed to, and with the, with the consent or, or tacit consent of the Palestinian Authority, managed to cr create a geographical and demographical uh, uh, picture and scenario of very distinct um, pieces of land where Palestinians live and enjoy some self-rule within, but all are scattered and disconnected uh, from each other and uh, drowned in an ocean of Israeli control. Uh, are trying to stage a sit in uh, at this settlement road and the IDF is guarding them and blocking the road. We stuck here every day because the, the Jewish the, the Jewish government they, they close the way out every time. For what reason? No, you said we have they have, okay, they have no reason. We don't know. We're going to our work. This is bad. No, very bad, yeah. Of course. We are in a prison under intensive Israeli occupation. If we want to go to any country, not just Israel, for work, all the borders are shut in our face. Israel's control is just limited to the land. Gaza's major natural asset is its 45-kilometer Mediterranean coastline which once provided a basic living for many Palestinian families, especially refugees. But now, Israeli forces prevent Palestinian fishing boats from going any distance out to sea. The fishing is very poor. We don't even get enough to feed ourselves or pay for the fuel. All night, just seven boxes and not even good fish. We haven't got enough good space to fish. The area is under siege. We can't get to good fishing grounds. We're only allowed to go one and a half kilometers out to sea, which is nothing, and there's a thousand fishermen. How can there be any fish left? The Israeli patrol comes, the military patrol come towards us and force us back. Sometimes, if we don't hear them, or the boat takes time and space to turn, if we're not quick enough, they come to us and order two men to jump in the sea, and then they take them to Erez, uh, and then to prison. British government prepare, uh, make, make for us the first problem. They are give the, the, the Jewish to Palestine. There is no peace. When, when we go back to our land, this is the, the real peace. <laughs> It's our fault that we left our homeland. We should have stayed even if they have killed us there. We've caused our younger generations to inherit a great problem because we left. But we had to. We were kicked out. The most important thing is we want a peaceful solution. Why? To allow us to go back to our land. And there will be peace between us. This is the most important thing. The solution in which Israel is willing to participate cannot be in the absorption of any number of refugees in Israel itself. You change the, the, the ratio, you change the balance, and you bring about the end of this predominantly Jewish state. That is something which I cannot accept. 
Uh, when my uh, parents came in 1933 uh, from Europe, not because they were persecuted by, by Hitler, Hitler just rose to power. They were not religious, they were not orthodox Jews, they were Jews but not orthodox and they wanted to live in a predominantly Jewish state and so do I. This is racism. I mean, when you build a state conditioned on a religion, you know, the fact you are a Jew, you would be on the airport, according to the right of return, a granted nationality, citizenship, and do enjoy first class treatment, just the fact you are a Jew. While uh, these millions of Palestinian people who lived their lives for generations and generations don't enjoy that basic right. We want a compromise and a peaceful solution and to implement this peace treaty in the right way. We don't want this trouble every day. Start the intifada, stop the intifada and start it again. This is not a solution. We want to live as well. We want to plan our lives. Should our kids stay like this forever? We want to be able to bring up our kids and live in peace. Thank you.